You're listening to the Valley Current. So it's like you probably put in at least 3,600 hours, right? Or more. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Way more I mean, than that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, the, I believe it was a willful infringement. Right. And I, I do not know how to go about it. Right. Uh, but I would have to go to the federal circuit. I don't right. want this judge to make any decisions. I want to go to the federal circuit. And I'm going to you add make, to, Before you go to the federal circuit, you got to make a motion for a new trial on willfulness. Like you got, you got to do a bunch of stuff. This is where you get into knowing the procedure in federal court. So you believe, from what I'm hearing, just very briefly, there's no charge for this. So maybe it's only right. worth the price you're not paying, which is zero. But you have a point that the doctrine of equivalence instruction was wrong. You have a point that maybe the instruction on willfulness was wrong. You have a point that something happened with the jury verdict or something that didn't have them assess willfulness correctly. You got to make a motion for a new trial. You got to take the view that you're entitled to a new trial on willfulness. Huh. And he's got to think about whether to give you that trial or not, because if you don't make that motion, the appellate court will say you didn't give the judge a chance to correct huh. the error. Now, it sounds like he's just going to say, forget it. But you got to do that motion in a very timely way. There's a certain number of days that you have under, I think it's Federal Rule 50. You have to look up Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 50, 5 zero. Right. It's a you, you probably, 28 days. I yeah, you got to look. I don't know if it's, I don't know how many, I don't, in the back of my mind, I don't know what it is, but there's a treatise that's a pretty good treatise that deals with stuff like this called federal patent litigation. I'll try to find it and, and text it to you. And okay. it goes through all of the things you can do after the verdict, but right. before the notice of appeal, because I don't think you even have a judgment yet. Do you, do you have an actual judgment entered yet at this point? No, no, because uh, they're going to wait till 28 days so before. Right. So they know. may make a motion for a new trial as well. So then you'll have like two motions because they're probably really bitter that the jury found in your favor at all. I can imagine they must be pulling their hair out. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, you they, they, they probably a very experienced lawyer lost to a pro per that he thought, oh, this is so wired for success because your witness list was probably late or incomplete or whatever technicality, probably under the local rules. There actually, you know, are very few federal rules that describe when a witness list is required, but there's local rules in different districts. And that's what the Eastern District of Michigan or Western that's District? That's the West, Western, Western, Western District of Michigan. Right. So, so, you know, you, you know, you, you've used Google very effectively. Another tool you can use is called PACER, P-A-C-E-R. PACER right. has all the federal filings. It's what you use when you file, right? You go in and right. you, uh, you have a PACER account for your filings. You can use a search within PACER to find other versions of motions for a new trial in other cases because they're all there. You just have to search for them. There's a search, oh, okay. there's a search tool available. And sometimes Google, you could search Google and Google has it. But there's a search tool called Pacer Monitor. Uh -huh. P-A-C-E-R-M-O-N-I-T-O-R. It might uh -huh. be free for 30 days. You can get a 30-day trial. Uh-huh. It gives you an advanced search tool to oh. search into all the Pacer. So you uh, can search like, you know, uh, willful infringement, motion for a new trial. Like you could search for a bunch of stuff because think of that database that the federal database is a very rich database. Google right. captures most of it, but maybe doesn't capture all of it. I, I've never compared it, but Pacer Monitor captures all of it. And so it gives you a way to imagine a resource that might be useful because you're pretty good at writing. You've written all the papers in this case and you're successful. You're, you know, I imagine they're going to try to drag out 
an appeal here or do a bunch of stuff that will cause you more delay, more this, more that. And I'm sure you're not going to be happy with their scorched earth approach. Um, but I wonder in the back of my mind, whether you have some additional, like in the back of my mind, thinking about this case, it sounds like there was a copyright infringement. It sounds like you should have registered all those drawings with the copyright office because it sounds like they took all your drawings and used them to your disadvantage. The copyright case is actually easier to prove and has less defenses, but you won the patent case. So I suppose that's good. It's just, I'm just thinking in the back of my mind, are they still, are they still making product? Are they still out there? I am process. not. I, I have not checked on now because I don't have a way of checking. I'm yeah. just uh, waiting for the um, you know the final judgment before I start moving right. forward. Right. Uh, right. But uh, yeah, they are selling the product. That's for sure. I mean, you probably can get now that you won. You probably can get a lawyer in Michigan right there, who's a member of that bar in Michigan. I mean, I'm a member of the bar in the federal circuit for the appellate work. Uh, and I'm a member of the bar in California and New York and lots of other places, but I don't think Michigan, I, I mean, you can become a member of the bar in Michigan, but I don't think I've done a case in Michigan. I've done cases in Ohio and New York and Oregon. Washington. Washington. Yeah, I've done all that. But in the back yeah. of my mind, I'm thinking now that you won, you could probably get a lawyer who can help you to maximize your chances of success because they could see there's some money that's going to come out of the story or the right. and I yeah. would think, I would think there would be a ton of Michigan, uh, federal competent federal, uh, trial lawyers that would say, let me help you now that you won, because, you know, you've done all the heavy lifting as it were, I don't know what they would charge, but it seems to me that, it would be good to get somebody local who maybe even knows that judge. And then the judge would be like, okay, now I got to get some religion here. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I, uh, you know, in the past I have reached out to almost every Tom, Dick and Harry yeah. and nobody wanted to take the case. Um, um, and uh, that's the reason I wound up, uh, you know, standing, uh, standing on my own. It's really uh, amazing, a really an amazing story. It's, you know, it's very rare to hear these stories. And I just imagine that it's such an inspiration. Like you could give a class at a business school or at, at an engineering school about, look, if you're persistent and you're smart and you're capable of using Google, which of course all these students are, don't let a bully take advantage of you, right? That's the moral of the story, isn't it? You said it perfectly. I think that's that's exactly what what it what it, what it is. And um, you know, um, I think um, the the tools that was necessary, like if I would have known this Pacer monitor and its advanced search options, I probably would have done a lot more. Uh, I, I just found out today. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, you, you're right. You know, if 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 a tools are given to individual like me, who gets into a trouble, uh, then they can use those tools and at least protect themselves. Uh, right. I mean, that, one, I mean, even even the simple act of getting a little bit of advice that said probably you should add two plaintiffs or two defendants or yeah. two or two counterclaimants is the right way to think of it. It would have been you individually and the company uh, as co co claimants, so right. that you get the bigger outcome. Because I wonder now whether you're barred by the statute of limitations on the claim that could have been brought for the LLC that lost all the revenue from the manufacturing deal, because that's where the lost profits argument is, right? Yeah. So. What happened in uh, the, they had filed a lawsuit against me and the company. Right. So the company could uh, could not hire an attorney. Right. So so the judge put the company in a default. And, and, and the company should never be, it should never have been, now that I realize, that company had nothing to do with the patent and the patent infringement. Right. 
So no, no, you, of- you, you got stuck by the rule that every corporation has to have a, a licensed attorney and the LLC, even though it might be a single member or might be just you and your wife as, you know, marital couple LLC, it's like a sole proprietorship. It's really a right. pass through entity. Right. And you got stymied by the rule, which I think probably needs to change that you can't represent <clears throat> that entity because it may have other stakeholders like creditors and employees and others. But the truth is you're just using that like a sole proprietorship um, um, substitute. Like you're using that entity like a flow through. Now, what you might have been able to do was to assign the claim from the LLC back to you individually so that you own the infringement claim or you right. all reach a contract claim because it sounds like what the judge did is he defaulted the company for not having a lawyer. Right. Did that correct? Did that happen early or when did that happen? Sometimes in 2014. Okay. And th- did that go up to the federal circuit or did that, did that not get appealed when you no. took the appeal? I, 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 I responded, I, I did talk about it uh, with the federal circuit, but the federal circuit says uh, it is a company that is in default and I cannot represent the company. Wow. wow. So you really got, that's the wrong outcome. I mean, on the justice of the case, that's really a hyper technicality. Yeah. I can tell you that there are a lot of people that get trapped. Like, I'm not going to criticize Legal Zoom, but Legal Zoom does, and other companies like it, they do what might be called quick and dirty LLCs, but they don't explain to people, well, there's some downsides to doing an LLC. It sounds great in theory, but what do you do when you got to get into, when you're in litigation and you have to hire an attorney because the LLC has to have counsel. Well, then what do you do? Do you collapse it? Like in theory, maybe you needed to dissolve the LLC and assign all of the rights and assets to yourself and just take the view that the LLC is out of the picture. Um, I own everything. We dissolved it. We paid whatever filing fees for dissolving it. And you own everything as the plaintiff and you're pursuing all the claims, both for infringement as well as for the loss of the profits from the manufacturing deal. I mean, your, your argument, if I'm hearing it right, is you should have made 4.5 million in profits on the manufacturing deal, right? Correct. Absolutely. Right. So you had a successful product. They made millions of dollars of revenues on it. You should have gotten more than a 4% royalty because you had a real manufacturing deal. They made probably more than 4.5 million in profits, but they're admitting to 4.5 million in profits. You should have gotten the disgorgement of those profits and treble damages on top of that in the best case. And had you won treble damages, you would have gotten attorney's fees for an attorney who was willing to take your case, say on a contingent fee, then that number could have been a pretty big number and that attorney could have done quite well. But the truth is there are a lot of attorneys that are not willing to put in the time or or the uh, investment. And then you have to go to something called a litigation lender and the right. litigation lender takes a big slice out of things. So maybe your approach was the better approach. I don't know. You know, it's hard to kind of reimagine what could have been, you know, back nine years ago. I mean, in the ideal world, you would have gotten an attorney who would have brought you a contingent fee litigation lender and you would have been targeting a much bigger outcome than what you got. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Did they exactly. ever? Did they ever? You don't have to say the number, but did they ever offer you a settlement, or they played hardball throughout this thing? They played hardball throughout because they were so convinced that they're gonna they're gonna win. Well, but they they thought they had the hometown advantage. Yeah. They filed against you. They yeah. got an early decision that uh, went up to the federal circuit. They got an early decision that disregarded your LLC as a, as a claimant, like right. go through the list and it looked like every bullet was hitting a shot, right? You, you were, you were still there. Like you had a, 
you had a bulletproof <laughs> vest on, but the bullets were hitting you. Yeah. And, you know, stuff is flying off. And they're like, wow, this guy's still standing. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. But you're still standing. Oh, they're alive to talk about it. <laughs> you could they were be. so angry. When the judgment came, I bet. You could, they, I bet. Were, <laughs> they were just, uh, they could not believe. So you, uh, you, they know, you, you, you could go to law school now. You That's what I was thinking. School. You could go to law school now. You know, you you would be able to be very convincing in a classroom about, well, here's how it really works. You know, <laughs> when, when, when you sit in a class, you know, and there are some law schools that have online law schools. They've started to, in COVID, they've started to deliver the material. I might, I, I might take you on that one. I, I will need a recommendation letter from you. <laughs> I, I I think your I think your record in this case. I think the judge would give you a recommendation. I think the <laughs> lawyer that you cross examine would give you. A I'd give you a recommendation too. But I'm just saying you're the rare breed of someone who doesn't get uh, put down and just takes the next challenge and goes to the next challenge and gets the next challenge. A lot of people would have given up. A lot yep. of people yep. would have been like, this is too much work. I'm doing, spending too much time. It generates too much controversy, family uh, disagreements. I mean, a million different things happen when you're in litigation, but you're kind of the exception that proves that to some degree, the system works. It's not perfect. It definitely can be improved. And there's a lot that that judge should be asking you, you know, probably you're the only one that's ever been successful in his court as a pro per uh, litigant. He should be saying to you, what do you think we should fix? What do you think is wrong? You probably would give him a long list. You'd say, well, you, you would tell yeah. you, you really want to know, judge, I'll tell you. And that would be useful data for the federal system because you know, the patent office educates inventors on how to file patents. They want to be user friendly. Right. The examiners want to be user friendly. The examiners right. want people to file patents. They make money. They get big fees. They It's like a business in a way. They're oh. self-funded, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so the part that doesn't fit in this story is the patent office is on one side of the ocean, like the bridge that's behind me. And right. the federal court is on the other side of the ocean, but the two of them have to work together because if you get a patent that can't be enforced, what's the point of getting the patent? It's yep. a nice piece of paper to put on your wall. Right. So what, right. What's the point? So you got to imagine that you're like the bridge that says, well, it's nice. They both have electronic systems. The patent office has electronic system. The, Federal circuits, uh, the federal circuits got an electronic system, and the uh, federal district courts have an electronic system. So you can get the filings done if you're savvy on how to do it. You can do it. But then when you have to be in front of a jury and a judge in an area that is a foreign area, I'm sure it was probably the first time you ever stepped into a court. First time. Yeah. Right? Very first time. Fun, right? Yep. Yeah. And you're like, wow, I got to I got to explain this to seven people and the judge is eight that know yep. nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Right. Yep. Interesting. So it was uh, it was a great experience, to be honest with you. Uh, but I was I think at some point I started fighting for people like me rather than for me. I was I was more uh, involved because uh, there are a lot of entrepreneurs like me yes. who, who, who get bullied like this and yes. you know they don't they don't make it yes. uh, so it, it became more of an obsession to fight for those people so right. you know and, and I, I, I want to continue that and I think you've made a very good point I didn't think about it but uh, how do I bridge and how do I bring the federal uh, circuit um, and, uh, and the patent office and this proceeding in a, judi in a district uh, federal courts, uh, some kind of discipline where people like me get a fair chance. Right, so you could do, you could do like, to me, you could do a public uh, speaking to like the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I went there for, in graduate school for a semester uh, the law school would love to have this story. Like to me, a guest lecture 
like you in any law school, Tennessee, Michigan, you name it. And my thought, the thing that's hitting me in the head is, and this federal district is what, Kalamazoo, or where was the federal district for that you were in in Michigan? Kalam- Kalam- Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. So, Kalamazoo. Right. Yeah. So, so um, I think I should try to connect you with some friends I have at the law school at the University of Michigan to try to get you uh, some students that are graduating and that want to help. Uh, they call this the clinic. They call this like the the uh, federal trial clinic, because uh-huh. I think if you can get that, this might be better for you because bringing a lawyer in might be expensive. They have to learn the file and read the transcripts. And maybe the better thing to do is to treat it like you're going to educate them and they're right. going to help you. And Wonderful. Ann Arbor Ann Arbor is not that close to Kalamazoo, but it's close enough. And if yeah. you can get a professor at the law school, I used to know a number of them. I'll look through my Rolodex and see if I could okay. find one for you. Maybe that's really what fate is meant to happen here. Plug you into someone who can help you because there probably is a lot of stuff in the local rules of that court dealing with motions for a new trial, that sort of thing. You have to read all those rules and make sure you comply with them as well as federal rule 50 make sure you meet all the time deadlines and everything else and then figure out what your best points are that you want to get a retrial on sounds like there were some mistakes made it sounds like you were disadvantaged but it sounds like you still mostly prevailed and and maybe the judge would on his own agree that, yeah, it should be both product A and product B based on the findings here, because the judge can do that. The judge has a lot of power to uh, to correct things. And maybe if a lawyer came in the case with a group of students from Ann Arbor, from the University of Michigan Law School, this would be a great uh, experience for them in dealing with, well, do you really want to understand how patents work? Well, right. you know, let me tell you how they work and let me tell you how they don't work. And then you can go from there. So I'm going to make a note to myself to do three things for you. One, see who I know that's at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Uh, two is find that treatise uh, name where you can research the stuff dealing with uh, this Rule 50 stuff. And then the third thing that I'll do is see if I know of any other uh, pro bono lawyers in Michigan, separate from the law school, that might have an interest in talking to you and seeing whether there's something they can do and on whatever fee basis they can do it. Maybe they would now take part of it on a contingency or something like that, that enables you to get some help because it really would be sad if this thing um, somehow doesn't lead to you getting fair compensation, that's for sure. I think I think I like it, and I I think you. First of all, you know, you're the first one who reached out to me, so I want to thank you for reaching well, out. I read, to me. I read I read the story, and I was like, man, I got to talk. I got to talk to him if he's willing to talk to me. This is such a <laughs> this is such a classic story, and you know, I teach in the law schools and the business schools. Uh, in California and in in New York. I'm also a member of the bar in Florida. And I teach in various places. And I think this is such a unique story that needs to be told in every law school, every law school, not just Michigan, that there are people like you who are smart enough to create innovations, get them patented, negotiate deals, sign deals. And then, you know, People take advantage. There's bullies out there. There are companies that are bullies out there and shame on them that they don't do the right thing. And and yeah. it's really great to see that you were successful on your own. I'm I'm I really have to applaud you. Thank you. Well, I, I will do I will do anything for you. So I just want no, you to no, don't know. worry about it. This is just a yeah. small way so. of saying thank you. And I will I will uh, send you some text messages. I can't do it tonight, but I will do it tomorrow. With, okay. uh, with the resources that I can uh, direct in your way. Good luck with the rest of your case. I hope like in a few months or weeks, uh, we have another conversation. You tell me that uh, that there's success here. I, I certainly would like to hear that or imagine that. 
Let me um, let me tell you about my family if you have a few minutes. Oh, uh, my wife is a school teacher. She works with the uh, special uh, and? ed students. Um, she okay. has been working um, for almost 20 years. Uh, has been recognized as one of the best teacher in the school systems. Nice. Uh, I have a son uh, who has a restaurant. He is a graduate of Vanderbilt, okay. and um, he's um, he's a big kid, six foot three inches tall. Nice. But uh, he likes a restaurant business, so he's in a restaurant business. His restaurant is uh, recognized as number seventh in the country. Really, the best restaurant, and his restaurant what is the food? best. What kind, of, what kind of food is it? He he has prepared the food. Uh, it's a kind of a uh, he doesn't call it a um, fusion because it's not a fusion. It's a original item. So he takes the items from our menu, which is we come from India. India. And then he added the American menu. Oh, so nice. he has eight eight course meal. Wow. So when you eat American menu, you know you are eating American menu. Wow. But when you, when you are eating Indian menu, you know you are eating Indian menu. And there's is no. This, is this Memphis or what part of Tennessee? It's in Nashville, Nashville, Nashville Tennessee. Okay. Nashville, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's his restaurant is called Taylor T A I L O R, and okay. I'll send you the link on it. Wow. Okay. And, and then I have a daughter. She's um he's 36. My daughter is 34, and she works for Nike. She's in a second tier management. As a global um, a creative director for Nike, right, and and she is actually living in Los Angeles. Okay, um, uh, she's supposed to be in uh, Oregon, but because of the COVID, you know, they had told her that she can work from anywhere. Okay, out of all the employees in Oregon, she's the only one who is allowed to work from California. Right, so. Uh, she's uh, she's very much uh, recognized even in the company. Uh, it you know if, if we can start talking to places like this. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I would like to go and talk to Nike um, just to give a little empowerment to my daughter because oh, yeah. she will be able, she will yeah. be able to say my, my dad. So, oh, yeah. You, uh, you have to be proud of what you've done. There are very few people that have the persistence. And okay. you'll, 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 you'll hear a lot of people talk about, I mean, I can tell you, you know, I represented the inventor. This story very much reminds me. I represented the inventor of the fuel injection system for Harley Davidson. Right. And he did the patent work himself. You know, he was a big Harley Davidson mechanic and he thought the carburetors were shit on Harley Davidson. So he invented his own fuel injection, just like your story. He went to Harley Davidson, showed them all the drawings, signed the agreements. And Harley Davidson did the same thing to him, basically. Oh, my God. Him. And we had that fight go on for what seemed like decades. And the Harley Davidson lawyers were like, you know, if you can win, you know, and, and literally the several trips to the federal circuit. So your story reminds oh my God. me. And, you know, the guy was um, like he was a heavy smoker. He didn't have good health. Like you look like you have good health. So bravo to you. And he went through what I think they kind of shortened his life. So by the end, sadly, uh, he ended up dying. And oh I think God. to this day, I think to some degree, Harley Davidson is responsible because they made his life miserable. I mean, they, <laughs> they contested everything. They fought everything. I mean, they are, you know, he, he, in my view, but for the fuel injection system, Harley Davidson would be doomed like oh my God. carburetors never worked right. I, I'm a motorcycle rider too. So huh. when he came and he had done some of the litigation himself, that's why the story I had to take over the case. And oh my God. He, he's talked about, you know, I can't do this anymore, but it's a classic example. There are stories like that, but I have to tell you, you've done the whole case from beginning to end. So you're like, you're like Superman in this story compared <laughs> to other people. That's why in many ways, I think the patent office should be interviewing you and talking to you about, because, you know, they do want to make these two systems, you know, the, the patent office and the federal system work together. They do imagine that there will be a better stream. Like in theory, the litigation is supposed to be done within one year. They never hit that goal. Just like a patent is supposed to be prosecuted within one year. This idea of stuff that goes on for years and years and years, it drives people crazy. But I got to run right now, but I look forward to hearing the rest of the story. Your your kids should be very proud of you, as should your 
wife because you've done something amazing. And I think your story needs to, like you should even give a TED talk about your story because you would probably, if you did a TED talk in front of a group, you probably would inspire them to like innovate, innovate, innovate. It would be a good story. I have not done anything that you have you are talking about, but I would I would love to do it. Now I'm going to send you a link. I'm going to send you a link to some of these TED talks that okay. talk about innovation, and then you'll see where the takeoff point is. Okay. How, you know, there's a notion of abstract innovation, but then there's the practical sweat of getting something done, and then not being taken advantage of. And I think that's got to be told at some level. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Good talking to you. See you later. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Tune in next time on the Valley Current.